Now, uh, building a form is pretty easy. Um, even if we didn't use something like a Wufu Form Builder to do it with drag and drop, it's a relatively easy process to generate the HTML code to do it too. Where it gets complex is the more advanced uh, email exchanges that you actually need once a form um, is implemented and um, well and sent. So if you think about it, I'm a visitor and here I am filling out a form. Now after I fill out the form, I need some kind of feedback to know that my form went through. And we, we're going to do two methods. First, after the form is done, we're going to send the user to a different page. Or not a different page, we, it'll be like some JavaScript action that just gives them a confirmation uh, confirmation that their form has been sent. Uh, and we're also going to want to send them an email to make sure that you know that we got the proper email address. It'll send a confirmation of that email address as well. Um, but beyond that we also want uh, maybe a notification email to our account that says hey you know uh, someone submitted a form blah 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 because you know no no good in a bunch of people submitting these forms and we're sort of clueless to it and and finally actually because of the way Zoho works or Zoho Wufu works it'll um, it'll also save that information into uh, its own database so uh, we don't have to like kind of piece together our own uh, information from the emails so Let's get right to it. If I go back to the Wufu Form Manager, I'm in the Forms tab, and uh, here I am. Here's the form I created, a contact form for Aquarium. I'm going to click on Edit. And so I'm good with the way I built the form. So add, add a field, I'm over that. Field settings, I don't need to mess with that. But now we're at Form Settings, and this is where we're going to do some of that notification business that I uh, talked about. Now. The first option, if you're going down the row over here, I mean, actually, the first option is label placements. If you wanted to change the way the labels are, sort of what I discussed before, and actually, you know, since I'm here, I'll align them to the top over there, to the left. So, anyway, uh, confirmation options we have two. We have show text, which is the one I'm going to do, or redirect to website. Now, you could um, create you can't do it with the free account but the redirect to website means that once the person clicks the submit button it'll send them to uh, a, another page on your website which could just be a thanks page you know that kinda is gonna do the same thing we're gonna do in a second uh, but instead we'll just use kind of like we don't wanna switch them to another page we'll just keep them on the same page and we'll write them a little message that says thanks for reaching out someone will be in touch with you soon. You should also receive a confirmation email shortly. Okay, so they know what to expect now. So if they don't receive that confirmation email, then they may be suspect that their um, um, email didn't go through. So that is good, and it says send confirmation email to user. Yes, um, and that's what we just stated in here. So now send to, we want to send it to whatever email address they had. So that's sort of a dynamic field. So send to, and look how easy they make it for us. So great, email, and reply to. So that's what email is it coming from? Um, you know, if this was a real, so I'm doing it for the aquarium, right? This would be like, you know, info at thecoolaquarium.com, but uh, I want that reply to to at this point just go to my UCLA account there we go um, now customize confirmation email this option says what's going to be in the body of that email um, so let's just go thanks for reaching out we have received your email in touch shortly okay Regards, the aquarium. Okay, cool. Um, and then include a copy of the user's entries. You could do that. This is going to be, uh, it'll include what they actually submitted in the form. Um, you could or 
could not, and I guess your name or company could put that in there too, which I think this is going to be what shows up um, in the email. You know, instead of like the email name, this is what it's going to be. So we'll click done over here. Um, moving down the line, we, we see limit form activity uh, and CAPTCHA. So let's say always show. Now CAPTCHA is this thing where it stops these bots, these computer generated spam crappers, don't know why they exist except to be a bunch of jerks, uh, things that just basically will spam your form to, you know, nauseam. That really is, is all they'll do. Um, and they'll just submit stuff to your form and basically you have a hundred entries for free you know run you out of that and it's crap um, so adding something like captcha on there is um, a good way to stop them so uh, you could do that by the way reca recaptcha in case you don't know is when you're doing captcha the first part is the part that actually um, it does uh, the character recognition so the comp the program knows what these characters are and you got to put these in right the second part is actually they're uh, scanning books and trying to make a huge digital library and um, the second part is words that the computer the OCR the optical character recognition when they're scanning in the books it it's stuck on this word and it doesn't know what this word is character wise so by you entering the right characters you're actually helping um, this cause out to to do more books uh, anyway I kind of digress but if you Google recaptcha um, it'll kind of go into what it is it's actually very cool when you when you realize what they're doing over here some nice crowdsourcing that they built in anyway I digress um, okay so we have the recaptcha we say always always show yep allow so let, let's let's see what these other two options are now it says allow only one entry per IP so that kind of I wouldn't click that because if they're saying one IP address now I don't want to get into networking over here but let's just say that whether you're a user at home just using your home internet and submitting this form you have one IP address but if you go to your office building um, you know let's just say an office building of like 20 30 people you more than likely still only have one or two different IP addresses over there obviously if you're an organization you may have uh, more but the point is is I wouldn't use this this is just a way to try to limit spam and that kind of stuff uh, we already put this one the captcha so I don't think it's necessary to do the second uh, schedule form activity is an interesting one because uh, this is good if you're Let's go back to the example I gave of uh, event registration. Well, you know, you have a window of opportunity to register for that event. And uh, let's say from March till May, whatever. Uh, that's where you could program this in. So it could be useful if your form is something that um, is very time sensitive. And obviously, you know, you don't want to forget to cancel it. And then you have that mess with people registering after the event due date. And I think you get it. Just but we don't need it for ours. Those are just a basic contact form. And now we'll save it. 